Hey, in this video, we're going to talk about the benefits of getting more width. You know, as we get older, our arcs tend to get both shorter and narrower. So right after this, let's see if we can do something about it to reverse that process. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. So I can think of four really strong benefits for working on your arc and getting it to be both wider and eventually longer. So number one, generally the wider your arc is, the faster the club head's going to move and the farther you're going to tend to hit the ball. So if you're in tight like this at the top of the swing, a lot of people who are older as they try to complete a parallel backswing tend to let it break down and get like this, well you're not going to be able to generate quite as much club head speed from there. You see, kind of the formula is how far have you displaced the handle for where it's going to be at impact. So if you're only here, you see that's not that great of a distance compared to if you're, say, up here. So club head speed is one big factor. Now another big factor that goes along with power and distance is that a wider arc is going to help put your club head a little bit more consistently on a collision course with the middle of the ball. In other words, you're going to hit it sweet in the center a lot more of the time if your arc is wide as opposed to if it's narrow. A third benefit I can think of is that a wider arc coming in, instead of like this, if you're up like this, to come back this way, I believe the club face is also going to be rotating less violently through impact. So you're not going to get quite as much of this and you're going to get a little bit more of a of a mild club face working around the arc and so it's going to make you a lot better at hitting the ball straight. And fourthly, it's going to give you what everybody's looking for on YouTube and that's more compression. Now why is that exactly? You got to remember the formula for compression. It's not hitting down and compressing the ground it's compressing the ball and so how are we going to do that? We would do that by taking away dynamic loft at impact which should mean leaning the, cl the club's handle forward like this and having forward lean at impact. That's turned this club into like a, a seven iron right now but we cannot have a corresponding angle of attack that'll just bring us back to the uh, spin loft of a pitching wedge again. So a wider arc is also going to create kind of more of a mild low point. In other words, you're going to come in sweeping the club through the grass a lot more level. Now, when you can combine that forward lean with a level strike this way, more of a brushing level strike, doesn't mean you're not going to have your low point in front still. You're just not going to be attacking so severely downwards like you might if your club was collapsed in with no arc. This would tend to make you chop down on it steeper. So that's going to give you the lower benefit of lower spin loft, make the ball get compressed more, make all your irons go really far and really solid. All right, so hopefully with those four benefits I have convinced you that you need to work on getting a wider arc. Let's see how we're going to do that. I like um, a couple of drills in this area. Number one, I like to take a little bit of a split grip here. And what we're going to do is draw it back to about left arm parallel to the ground, somewhere out here. And with the split grip, you can really feel yourself pulling that club away from your chest, just like that. Look how wide I'm getting that thing. Now, the key to getting that thing wide, not only just having the the arm straight and staying straight because you can see on the in my collapsed model how much the left arm bends and how close it sits to my shoulder but instead I'm going to try to get the left arm straight but the real key is to involve the scapula the shoulder blade the shoulder into it so you watch as I do this split grip again you see how how much I've gotten the shoulder girdle and the scapula to pull away from the spine 
and kind of work its way into the arm lever, effectively making my arm like six or eight inches longer. So do this exercise for just a couple minutes a day. Feel that width. Feel the shoulder coming under your chin early. And then start to try to take it in 15 minute increments further and further. So you might start at a, an L position here and go a half an hour more to 930 and then to 10 and then to 1030 and really get that scapula, the trapezius and the rhomboid muscles really stretched out. Feel some big time arc and width in that backswing. Now, once you're able to do that preliminary drill and you kind of do about five or 10 reps of that and hold it for five to 10 seconds each. Now we can continue up more into a full swing by simply repositioning the right wrist under the left wrist, kind of hook it. We can get that wide feeling again, the shoulder under the chin. And then we can wind it all the way up to a parallel position. Just like that. Now, I was able to use my right arm and wrist to kind of pin my left arm and kind of push on it. Forces me to wind up the right way. So rather than lifting the arms and letting them bend at the elbow, thereby collapsing the arc, you see, I'm only a couple inches off my shoulder right here. You're looking for, to get that club shaft, as far up off of that right shoulder as you can to get all these benefits that I mentioned in the beginning. So one more time, take it to that first spot, hook the wrist, you know, start at about nine, work your way in about half hour increments like this. and you would hold it for about five seconds each time. Now there's a lot of stretching going on there, both across your back and your shoulder blade. And so start easy, keep breathing, don't hold your breath. Do about five to 10 reps, about five seconds hold each. And then you start working that into some easy golf shots. So what you might do, let's practice one. Okay, I'm gonna do the little bit of a split grip again, like I did in the first drill. Let's just take it to about 9.30 here. And now let's maintain this width all the way to the ball. And put back the wrist cock you took out. And then softly repeat that nice wide arc. Super high smash factor for a pitching wedge at 1.27. That's a 46 degree pitching wedge. 1.27 is pretty much as high as you're gonna get. It means not only did I strike it in the center of the face, but I also struck it with forward lean, sweeping through it because the arc was maintained wide all the way down into the ball. Now we have 140 yards out of only 81 miles an hour, so super distance efficient. That is a big pitching wedge for not a lot of effort or speed. And you can see the face angle of the club was very close to being dead square, zero degrees, making the shot go plenty accurate, only eight feet off line at about 140 yards. All right, so don't expect this to be built in a day, but if you can just do these exercises, these two exercises, do the split grip, pull that sucker out and up, get it away from your chest, then do the hook to really wind it up to full. Practice that about 10 times, maybe warming up before your next bucket of balls and then see if you can incorporate it into some ball swings. All right, I'm gonna go back to work on this because it's really feeling good. Hopefully this tip will help some of you out there greatly. I hope you'll report back in the comments below. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I'm Steve, and as usual, I'll either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.